Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now, this picture owes a lot of its look to surface tension. However, the lighting and camera techniques used in its creation are equally important. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so let's start with the subject. So what I've got here is uh, a baking tray. Uh, and it's a black baking tray, and it has a very slight sheen to it. And that is what I'm going to use to contain uh, some water and then float the paper clips on the top of the water. And just pop that in there. So this will be about uh, a centimetre deep, something like that. It doesn't need to be very deep at all. There we go. And now here I have some paper clips uh, and I have a pair of uh, tweezers. Uh, it's very delicate to do this, but you should be able to float the paper clips on the top of the water. Like that. Just gently pop them together. So, and you'll notice that they are all sticking together. That's because they're very slightly magnetic. Shall we have another blue one? Let's have another blue one. There we go. OK, so we'll leave those to float about a bit. There we go. So the next thing to do would be to set up the camera. So here I have a full frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. And the camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. OK, so I'm just going to pop this camera on this tripod. Now, obviously, I'm going to need to uh, just take this up in height a little bit uh, and point the camera down at the subject. So what I can do on this tripod, it has a geared centre column. So I can just wind that up. Arbitrary height to start with, something like that. And we have a geared head. So I can just lean that over to about there somewhere. Uh, and with that in roughly the right position, what we can do is try and line the shot up. OK, so we'll zoom that all the way into the 70 mil end on the lens and we'll try and focus that up a bit. So the other thing to notice is that's right on the minimum focusing distance uh, for this lens. So what I'm going to do uh, to make it focus a little closer and so that I can get in tighter to the subject is use an extension tube. Uh, now this is an extension tube, this is a 25mm extension tube uh, and it is literally that, it's just a tube with uh, some electrical connections so that the camera can interface properly uh, with the lens. So what I'll do is just take this off the tripod and we'll just take the camera and pop that extension tube in between the body and the lens. So take that off, pop that on, and put the lens back. There we go. Okay, so now I'll put that on there, take it back to the 70mm end, and now we'll try and line up the shot. So I'll just wind that down a little on the geared head, like that. And we'll just focus that up a bit. There we go. That's more like the sort of thing I want. I know it's not quite in the right place yet, but it's near enough for uh, starting purposes. OK, so with that now done, uh, next thing I'm going to do is just grab an image, just to make sure I don't get any contamination from the house lights. So I'll turn the camera on. Uh, and you can see that the software has recognised the camera. 
So it's in full manual mode, uh, 1 250th of a second for the shutter speed, which is the flash sync speed for that camera, 100 ISO. Uh, and I'm going to start with an aperture of f16. Now 16 is um, quite small, which will give me a very large depth of field. So we'll see what that looks like. OK, so with those settings, I'll just grab an image. There we go. At an aperture of f16, unsurprisingly, we get no image with no flash, which is what we want. OK, so now to set up the light. What I'm going to use is this Profoto B1X uh, with a 2 foot by 2 foot softbox on the front of it. I'm just going to place this in here facing the subject. Something like that. There we go. With that in position, I'll just turn that on. And we'll turn on the flash sync trigger. And without doing anything else, what I'm going to do is just grab a test image uh, just at an arbitrary energy level, uh, just so I can assess the exposure. OK, and you can just about make out, just over here, uh, the subject. Um, so what I'm going to need to do is increase the energy by quite some way. So let's go for um, five stops. So I'll just select that head and I'll increase the energy by five stops. There we are, that's much better. Now I know the subject has uh, actually floated slightly out of the way, but for the purposes of setting up the shot, uh, that's pretty good as far as the exposure is concerned. Now I've used this softbox to give me a uh, homogeneous um, white background which is what you can see reflected in the water. So in order to break that up a bit, what I'm going to do uh, is use a uh, gobo. And this is basically just a piece of card uh, with some holes in it. Now for this sort of thing, at this sort of magnification, you're going to need quite a coarse pattern, otherwise it's not going to show up. So with this, like it is, I'm just going to place that about there somewhere, and we'll just see what difference that makes. There we go. So you can clearly see the pattern uh, in the background of the picture here. But you can also see that you've got this lensing effect due to the surface tension of the water, uh, which is giving you uh, an image of the background gobo there. So what I'll try and do now is get the subject more or less in the right place. Uh, I might just adjust uh, where this is. Uh, and in order to help me do that, what I'm going to do is turn the modeling light on, like so. And then I can actually see through the viewfinder uh, what I'm going to get. So whilst looking through the viewfinder, what I can do is adjust the position of this gobo, like so. And I'll attempt to adjust the position of the subject. Now this is very delicate because they are basically just floating on the water. So you just need to nudge them very gently to get them to move. There we are, that's the sort of thing. I just adjust the focus while I'm there. There we are. Right, so we'll just grab another test image. There, now we're starting to get there. You can see the pattern in the background and you should also be able to see that this looks very different to when I was looking through the viewfinder. And that's because when I was looking through the viewfinder, the aperture on the lens was wide open. It was uh, 2.8. Now we've shut it down to f16, which has made a, everything a lot sharper. But actually, I think I prefer it uh, a little softer. So what I'm going to do 
is just drop the aperture from f16 to f8. Now that's a difference of two stops. So I'll need to take two stops of energy out of the uh, light to get the same exposure. So I'll just do that. And we'll grab another image. There we are. That's more like it. You should be able to see now that that is what we had before. And you can see how sharp the image is in the background. And this is what we've got now. OK, these have floated around a little. Uh, but you can see that this is a lot softer. And this is more like the sort of thing that I want. I might even try and take that a bit further. Um, so let's go down to F4. There we go, which is another two stops. So I'll take another two stops out of the energy. So there we go. There we are, that's much more like it. So this is now very much softer. Uh, and this is giving me the sort of thing that I want. But you'll also notice that the depth of field is virtually non-existent, uh, which again I think adds to the picture. So we'll try and get this in the right position and grab a few pictures. OK. I'll look through the viewfinder. I'm just going to move that slightly over. We'll just grab a few images just to give a choice, like so. There we go. So with that now captured, uh, the next thing to do is just to go into Photoshop and finish off the image. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, and this is the image that I've decided to go forward with. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just make a copy of this. Um, so the way that I tend to do that is just go on to the layer here, right-click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but ask for a new document. And we'll just call that Paperclip. And just click on OK. There we go. So Photoshop has made me a new file, which is Paperclip, and that's at the top here. So now I can just dispense with the camera original, and I'm using this one to do all my editing on. Right. Um, so basically, uh, I don't think there's a great deal that I actually need to do to that. I may just add an adjustment layer, uh, and we'll go for a vibrance adjustment layer. And I'm just going to increase that vibrance ever so slightly and just really saturate the colors. Not too much. It's easy to go too far with this. If I go all the way to the side here, you see that this just looks uh, a little pop arty, which is not really what I want. So I'm just going to bring that slightly back. There we are. OK. Now, the only other thing that I might do uh, is just uh, generally take down the very outsides. Um, so, again, there's lots of different ways to do this. I don't want to necessarily add a vignette. Uh, I just want to take it down a bit. So what I'm going to do uh, is just add another adjustment layer. And this time I'll go for uh, a levels adjustment. Uh, and on this, what I'm going to do is generally make the whole image uh, a little bit darker. Like so. And there we are. And I just take the contrast down a bit, like so. Now, because this is a completely clear uh, adjustment layer, what I can do now is just add uh, the mask element. Uh, so painting in black will reveal the underlying uh, image. So just make sure black is selected. And don't forget, this is just painting on this adjustment layer mask. It's not affecting the image uh, at all. So you can do this as many times as you like, and it's not going to make any difference to the 
actual image file. There we are. So I can just bring that back to where it was, like so. There. That's pretty good. Uh, and then finally, I'm just going to um, add a crop. Uh, as usual, I'm using 16 by 9 for the video. Uh, and I'll just reposition that ever so slightly. There we are. Click on OK. And there we have it. So by using an extension tube, that's enabled me to get very close. And I've added some extra interest by using a gobo. Some people call them a cookie. Uh, in front of the light, just to add a pattern. And all in all, I think that's worked rather well. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.